throughout the morning and probably into next week as well, we're going to be talking about the budget that has passed or is in the verge of passing in the legislature, the budget the governor says that she will not accept, and just talk about some of the practical impacts of that budget if it were to go through the way it is. Uh, it's, it's one thing to talk about total numbers of dollars, but it's, it's much more relevant, I think, to talk about what the budget does and what it won't do, depending on what the level of the budget is. We're joined on the line right now by somebody who knows quite a bit about what it will do to environmental issues in the state. Cindy Roper is Executive Director of Clean Water Action in Michigan. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Walt. As it stands right now, with the budget as it was passed, the general government budget, and the especially for the Department of Environmental Quality, what does this budget change in Michigan in terms of our environmental protections? How will the average person notice the changes? Well, I, I really appreciate your having this topic on the show this morning because I think one of the things that's been left out of this debate is the fact that the environmental quality budget, the Department of Environmental Quality, is really the Department of Air, Land, and Water in the state of Michigan. It's not, you know, the environmental quality has this sort of um, obscure na- sounding name, but it's about your water. And what um, immediately after the budget passed this week, I talked with the director of that department, Steve Chester, and asked him straight up what the implications are going to be. And I think it's important to know that um, the department has seen a cut of 73.3% in state funding since 2002. So this is an area that is well ahead of the curve in terms of the cuts that have taken place. And this year alone, there was a 39% cut to that department. What we believe has happened is that those who do not want us to know what's in our air, what's in our water, and what is being released into these, um, you know, onto our land and in other places have effectively turned that agency into the bad guys if you will, and they've made this whole debate about uh, we don't like the Department of Environmental Quality, and really what they're saying is we don't like clean air, we don't like clean water, and we don't want the people of Michigan to have safe drinking water and to have clean beaches. There's a whole list of implications that go along with it. On the top of the cuts, though, the the director made it clear that there will be less monitoring of the pollutants going into our environment, into our, you know, drinking water, into our beaches, there will be less enforcement, fewer inspections, and that the staff will be cut who can actually go out into the field and to make recommendations about permits that um, businesses and others are seeking to conduct activities, um, you know, in their daily lives. And so we really think this is just a a horrible step backward for the Great Lakes state. Um, And we've also come out and said that if this moves forward, we're calling on the governor to veto that budget. And if it moves forward, that the state should pull their pure Michigan ads, which have been award-winning ads, but who that are selling something that we no longer believe is um, of the quality that it should be in order to guarantee that the public and, you know, tourists and others are getting the benefit of a clean and safe environment. Maybe call it the impure Michigan ads now? Well, maybe we should. And, you know, we hate to do that because we don't want to do a thing to harm our tourism economy, but we think it, it's important for people to know that we have no idea now what is going on um, in terms of, of um, you know, the monitoring of pollution and of the enforcement that, you know, the department has already said we can't do what we are being told to do by law. From an economic development standpoint, it seems to me if you cut the staffing in the department responsible for doing all the permitting for war, uh, water and air, all it's going to do is slow down the permitting process so that uh, economic development is stalled. That's what we believe as well, and that's part of the absurdity about it. Um, You know, again, I I think that we are willing to talk about and have been talking about revenue increases, revenue enhancements, figuring out what are the different ways that we can fund environmental protection. One thing is, as I believe many who might be listening this morning know, um, Michigan is still the dumping ground for out-of-state and Canadian trash. We are still importing millions of tons, and that we have this legislature has done nothing to put into place an increase of the charges that out of state and canadian um you know disposal would have to pay and we believe that there's a way to structure that so that the money 
that would come from the out-of-state and Canadian trash could go into funding the environmental um, protection programs, and it could also help offset some of the shortages that local towns and cities are experiencing right now with their budget cuts. Now, it's just one of the impacts of the budget cuts, but I didn't want to explore environment. Uh, later on, we'll be talking about police and fire protection and how it's impacted by the budget cuts as well. Cindy, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you, Walt. Cindy Roper from Clean Water Action in Michigan, just one of the groups concerned about the, the budget cuts that have been enacted by the Senate and they're trying to push through, and the House for that matter, it's on the governor's desk right now, although she's likely to veto the bill.